The view of bird evolution has been turned upside down by a tiny broken bone that went misidentified for decades. Come and get a better understanding of the new understanding of bird evolution as they went from awesome, giant, titan-killing beasts to lame, but smart, cute, stinky, flappy beasts with the publication of the brand new Janavis. Based on how their palate bones are set up, each of the about 11,000 species of birds on Earth today are put into one of two big groups. The Paleognath, or ancient jaw group, is made up of ostriches, emus, and their relatives. Like humans, their palate bones are fused together into a solid mass. All other groups of birds belong to the Neognath, or modern jaw group. This means that the bones of their palates are connected by a joint that allows them to move. This makes their beaks much more flexible, which helps them build nests, clean themselves, get food, and defend themselves. Thomas Huxley, a British biologist who was known as Darwin's bulldog for his strong support of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, was the first person to divide the two groups. In 1867, he put all living birds into two groups, those with ancient jaws and those with modern jaws. Huxley thought that the ancient jaw was the original shape for modern birds and that the modern jaw came about later. This fused palate is also found in non-avian dinosaurs, including feathered dinosaurs that were the ancestors of today's birds. Because of this, zoologists used to think that ostriches and their relatives were the oldest group of birds and that upper beaks that could move evolved later. Now, paleontologists have found a key skull bone from an ancient bird that lived about 67 million years ago, just before the dinosaurs were killed by the asteroid. The bone is a piece of the upper jaw, and it looks a lot like the part of the upper beak that moves in chickens and ducks today. This led the researchers to think that the upper beak of the ancient bird also moved. The rest of the specimen shows that it was related to Ichthyornis, a small Cretaceous toothed bird which lived about 20 million years earlier. Overall, the new research suggests that the ancestor of modern birds already had a beak with joints and that a fused palate evolved later in ostriches and their relatives. In the 1990s, a bird fossil was found in the Maastricht Formation at the Cimentary Belge Réuni romont bosse Quarry, which is west of the Belgian village of eben emal Bachenge. Rudy Dortangs, a Dutch paleontologist, was the one who found it. It was partially described for the first time in 2002 by a group of American and Dutch paleontologists as Europe's last Mesozoic bird. Many of its pieces were still stuck in a hard block of sediment, so it couldn't be studied in detail without being broken up. On the main block, only parts of the skull and forelimbs are visible. It also has pieces of tooth and backbone. So, the fossil was kept at the Natural History Museum of Maastricht in Maastricht, Netherlands. Based on this, it was placed in the clade Ornithurae, which is the group of birds' ancestors. The sediments where the fossil was found are thought to be 65.8 million years old, which means they are from the late Cretaceous. The researchers concluded that this fossil is the youngest non-neornithine, non-modern bird known anywhere in the world. It was found just 40 meters below the KT boundary, which is about 800,000 years before the boundary. Juan Benito and Daniel Field, paleontologists at the University of Cambridge who study how birds have changed over time, borrowed the fossil from the Natural History Museum of Maastricht in 2018 so they could use computed tomography to look at these bones. They were hoping to find more of the animal's skull, but the first scans only showed ribs and vertebrae. Disappointed, they put the project on hold for more than a year. When Benito went back to look at the fossil, he was confused by a bone that was supposed to be part of a shoulder but seemed too small to be. He figured out that the fossil was a piece of bone that had been broken in half. After finding the other piece and putting the two together, Benito, Field, and their colleagues concluded that the whole structure was a very delicate part of the upper palate. This part is a bone called the pterygoid, which is a key part of the upper beak because it has joints. The researchers say that the bird was a previously unknown species. They named it Janavis finalidens, after Janus, the Roman god of beginnings, endings, and changes. It was a coastal flyer that lived in the shallow seas of what are now Belgium and the Netherlands. 
It was about the size of a grey heron and weighed about 1.5 kilograms. The two biggest traits used to differentiate modern birds from their non-avian ancestors is a toothless beak and immobile upper jaws. Genevis finalidens was a pre-modern bird because it still had teeth, but its mobile jaw structure is like that of a modern bird. Using geometric analyses, we were able to show that the shape of the fossil palate bone was extremely similar to those of living chickens and ducks, said Bei Chen Kuo, a co-author of the study. Surprisingly, the bird palate bones that are the least similar to that of Genevis are from ostriches and their kin, added co-author Clara Widrig. Both Kuo and Widrig are PhD students in Field's lab at Cambridge. Evolution doesn't happen in a straight line, said Field. This fossil shows that the mobile beak, a condition we had always thought post-dated the origin of modern birds, actually evolved before modern birds even existed. We've been completely backwards in our assumptions of how the modern bird skull evolved for well over a century. The researchers say that this finding doesn't mean that the whole family tree of birds needs to be redrawn, but it does change how we think about a key part of how modern birds evolved. Genevis finalidens? What happened to it? It didn't make it through the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period, just like the big dinosaurs and other toothed birds. Researchers say this could be because of how big it is. Genevis was about the size of a vulture. Smaller animals, like the wonder chicken found in the same area as Genevis by Field Bonito and their colleagues in 2020, probably had an advantage at this time in Earth's history because they needed to eat less to stay alive. This would have helped after the asteroid hit the Earth and messed up food chains around the world. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman.